trust issue in my good old duck. Trust issue in my friends all talk. First up is Dr. Robert Lustig. He's a neuroendocrinologist and emeritus professor of pediatrics at UCSF, as well as a member of the Institute of Health Policy Studies. He burst onto the scene 15 years ago with a video called Sugar, the Bitter Truth, that now has 25 million views. He also has three books and is the leader in the anti-sugar movement. Thank you, Dr. Lustig. Thank you. I'm Robert Lustig. I'm a emeritus professor of pediatrics at UCSF. I was head of the pediatric obesity program there for 16 years. And I am here to state for the record that I am for dessert. For dessert. I am not for dessert for breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner. And that is what the food industry has been feeding us for the past 50 years. We have to fix it. It's both toxic and addictive and killing us. The global crisis of non-communicable disease is chewing through lives and money throughout the US and around the world. Despite the clear knowledge of the diseases, the causes, and their consequences, virtually no headway has been made in stemming the tide of this NCD tsunami. Not only are the frequency and prevalence of these diseases increasing, but the age at which they're occurring is getting earlier as well and thus increasing the cost of delivering health care. Currently, health care costs are 20% of GDP, yet NCDs are 75% of health care. That is bankrupting the health care budget and placing an untoward burden on its delivery for everyone. Likewise, Social Security is a legal pyramid scheme. The young, healthy people have to pay in for the old, infirm people to be able to take out. Well, I'm going to be 72 in 2029 when Social Security ends, and I want my friggin' Social Security, and so should you. The entire pyramid's gonna collapse. There won't be any Social Security for anyone because of chronic disease. So here are the three myths that have to be debunked before we can get a handle on this scourge. First, it's about obesity. In fact, it's not about obesity, it's about metabolic syndrome. Why this is a metabolic revolution. Not an obesity revolution, a metabolic revolution. 45% of adults today have prediabetes, and 93% and of Americans have at least one manifestation of metabolic dysfunction, but only 65% are overweight or obese. Second, all calories are the same. A calorie is a calorie. Also, not true. Certain consumables convey disease risk exclusive of their calories. For instance, alcohol. Alcohol is toxic, not because of its calories, it's seven calories per gram, no, but because it's metabolized to a toxin, that's why. Likewise, sugar is metabolized exactly the same way, and that's why sugar is the alcohol of the child. Type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease used to be the diseases of alcohol. Today, they're the diseases of five-year-olds because sugar is the alcohol of the child. And the third myth that has to be debunked, it's about personal responsibility. Personal responsibility is an ideology. It's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Magna Carta. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. Do you know who invented personal responsibility? the tobacco industry. And guess who owned the food industry? The tobacco industry. It's the same thing being shoved down our throats or in our mouths for the exact same reasons. It it, it, personal responsibility absorbs corporate respons absolves corporate responsibility in the same way that tobacco's wrangled free of culpability. Well, we held their feet to the fire and we got some justice. We have no justice for food, and we have to get there. Just remember, once upon a time, sugar was a condiment. Sugar was fetishized, it was so rare. But now it's a diet staple. Soda, juice, sweetened coconut water, sweetened teas, frappuccinos, all desserts. Hate to tell you, but granola is dessert. flu flavored yogurt is dessert. Chinese chicken salad is dessert. 
We, and especially our kids, are eating and drinking dessert all day long and frying our liver in the process. These diseases are so nefarious, so insidious, that our healthcare system is not prepared for the flood of children with type 2 diabetes showing up at Children's National. And I want to call out Neera Gupta and Michelle Mita Snyder, who are here to help move metabolic health forward. Now, it's up to our elected representatives to ensure the public good when the market fails to do so. The market has failed with tobacco, alcohol, opioids, and then Congress had to step in for each of those. In the case of sugar, they have done absolutely nothing. The preconditions for societal intervention are, uh, in, intervention are ubiquity, toxicity, abuse, and negative impact on society. Sugar meets all four hands down and buries opioids, tobacco, and alcohol in its wake. It is that pernicious and that dangerous. In fact, the US government has actually made the situation worse. It's called the National School Breakfast Program, which feeds 29% of children every day. What's in? the NSBP breakfast, a bowl of Fruit Loops and a glass of chocolate milk. That's 27 grams of sugar, more than double the upper limit, and it's just breakfast. Dessert for breakfast kills children. My job is to save children. It doesn't have to be this way. In California, we've passed state budget resolution 348 to get added sugar down to 5% of calories in public school meals. Kids don't want to be sick. Adults don't want to be sick. But until we have the food to be healthy, we have no choice but to be sick. We have no recourse and no future unless we have a metabolic revolution now. Thank you. <laughs>